My name is Maria Coriel Martin, and I'm an expeditionary artist. I'm passionate about bringing together art, science, and education. And today, I want to inspire you to make your own adventure art kit with supplies you have just around your house. So first off, for your adventure art kit, you're going to want a sketchbook. You may have something already at home, but if you don't, I'm going to show you a few ways to make a sketchbook out of just simple office paper and a cover if you choose. We're going to do a couple sizes. Here's a little one just using a greeting card and these can be perfect for going out and documenting your explorations. Now you may already have your own sketchbook but in case you'd like to make one I want to introduce you to a few simple ways. You can get started with a really simple version using just five sheets of office paper. You can use some other paper too, but office paper is what we most normally have lying around the house. Fold it in half, and then if you'd like to do a colored cover, you can use construction paper about nine inches by 12 inches wide so that there's just enough to cover up your sketchbook and you can fold it in half over the white paper to make a nice cover. Now, to stick everything together, just use your stapler. And you can do about three staples. One at the bottom, one in the middle, and finally, one up top. Now, the first time you open up your sketchbook, open it a little bit carefully and press down the side where the staples are so that your book will open nicely. And now, after it's had one good open and pressing, you're ready to decorate the cover and go. So I'd just like to inspire you with a couple other approaches to the pamphlet sketchbook. We did one big one, and here's an idea for a smaller one you can use a greeting card, such as one maybe your friends or family sent you or something you might have in a box. So for a smaller card that's like four by six inches, you can try folding your paper in half the long way, just your office paper. And now you'll have to get some scissors and cut it down. And I might just make a note here about where I need to cut my paper. So, make a note, and now, this is a lot of paper, if I had a paper cutter I'd use that, but I'm just going to give this a nice trim with my scissors. Give it a little trim more, it's okay if it's a little rough, things don't need to be perfect. And then, I'll slide this into the middle. Now, I'd like to trim down those outer edges too, it's a little bit wide. I'll do my best to just do a straight cut. One more little trim. There we go. And put it into my little book. Now, for this little book, I could do the same staple down the long edge, or I could try sewing. To sew this little booklet together, I'm going to open it up. And the first thing is, if you've got a little clip, might be helpful to add that so the paper doesn't slip around. And I'm going to make three dots to make this easy for you to see. Actually, I'm going to make them on the outside. I'll do one, two, three. Now, I found a sewing needle and some thick thread, and I'm going to start by carefully pushing my needle in to that first hole. And I'll leave a little tail of thread. Actually, I tied a little knot there, so I'll leave that for now. Now, open up my book, and I'm gonna estimate a little bit where to go out near the top. Push my needle through. A thimble would probably help here. Give it a good push. Try not to poke myself on the other side. Go out. Now I'm back on the outside of the book. So just to review, Number one, went through from the back, went up to the top, out, and now I'm gonna go all the way down 
to the next bottom hole, little hole. Push it through. And now I'm going to go through the middle once more to finish my sewing. Push it through. And here's where I can make just a nice little knot of my string together. And you can do this with ribbon, um, thread, string. If you have some thicker cord, uh, you'll just want to punch bigger holes before in your book, maybe using um, a little hole punch or a knife, something where you can make a little bit of a bigger hole. Um, may have to ask your grown-ups for some help on, on doing that correctly. But this nice little thread, take this out, trim the ends, and now I've got a cute little sketchbook. We've made two sketchbooks so far using just our office paper, one stapled, one sewn, and I'd like to give you one more idea for binding a sketchbook. So this one last style of simple sketchbook binding is pretty fun. You can begin with the same pamphlet as the others. Here I counted out five office pages and I've done another construction paper cover. Now you can get creative with your covers. Maybe if you've got an old calendar you could use or origami paper or make a collage, have some fun with it. And next, if you have a hole punch, this will work really well. And I'm just gonna make two holes. And actually before making holes, it can be helpful to clip your paper so that it won't slip around. This is gonna take a big squeeze to get all this through all this paper. One hole, Ooh. and another near the top. Run, two, three. Now for this binding, it's really simple. And it actually uses just a stick and a rubber band. And you can use, depending on the size, if you've got a, a big rubber band or a small one, here's a larger one I had lying around my house. And I'm gonna poke the rubber band up from the bottom and loop it around this stick I found outside in my garden. Stick it through. Now, I'm gonna go to the other hole and do the same thing on the other side. Pull the stick through A rubber band through and then slip my stick. I could use a slightly longer stick but I think I can just make this work. So now the stick and the rubber bands are helping to hold these pages together. And just like before, opening it the first time I'll crease it down a little bit so that when I open it, I won't hurt the book too much. And then I can close it. So a little bit of a straighter stick, you could even use a chopstick, will work really well on this simple binding. Once you've got your paper, there's all sorts of things you might find at home that you can use to sketch. You might have some simple markers. And next, check out the office pens that your parents might have or you might have on your desk. Um, might be a little retractable office pen, this is a Sharpie permanent marker, so we have to be careful what we write with on these. And this is a bigger brush pen, kind of an art marker. And I'll show some examples of how to use all of these. And finally, you might even have crayons, which can be wonderful for going out and sketching. Something else I like to carry on my explorations as well are little tiny watercolor palettes. You may have something larger, and that's just fine, just so long as it's not too heavy. And to carry along with these, you might have a paintbrush, or these are really wonderful tools called a water brush, where you actually can fill the brush with water. So when you squeeze it, a little water comes out. These are super handy. I'd like to demonstrate using some of these tools that you might find around the house and just show you some ideas for exploring the types of marks they make and what you can do. 
So with your office pen, maybe you want to try using it more on its side or straight up and down. Try making your marks close together or really, really light. You might be surprised with the range of marks you can make. Next, I forgot to mention, but you also might just want to use a pencil. Just like the pen, explore the range of marks you can make. Now, I love markers too. And Crayola markers like you might already have in your art kit at home can work really well. You might even explore blending them together a little bit, one on top of the other, mixing some of your colors together. So green and brown. And finally, I want to show you something that you can explore with your pens using a brush. Some pens are what's called water soluble. So if you take a little paintbrush and apply a little bit of water, you'll see the colors will blend. And this can be really fun to explore in your sketches to add a little bit of shading. So you might see what colors in your sketchbook, what pens might blend together a little bit as you choose them from around your house. Little inspiration with crayons. Crayons can be blended together like the pens and they're also so much fun for rubbings. Like if you find something outside like a really neat leaf, you want to sandwich it under a piece of paper and simply lightly rub the crayon back and forth over to have a nice rubbing appear. This can be a wonderful way to record things on your adventures. And finally, as I showed you before, one of my favorite things is to use watercolor. And if you are using some water on your paper, having a little bit of an extra towel to wipe your brush on can be great. And often you'll want a little bit of a heavier paper, but even on office paper, you can still play with a little bit of light watercolor. You don't need to start fancy just to have fun coloring in your sketches. Another tool you might want to consider carrying with your art kit is a nice clip, something you can use to clip your paper open so the wind won't blow your pages around. And then this is handy to close your sketchbook up before putting it away. Once you've got your supplies collected, find a nice bag you can put them in to keep them ready to go at any time. Might be a Ziploc bag from the kitchen or a special cloth bag with a little pull tie. Just something that'll hold everything together so your supplies are ready to go anytime on any adventure.